You're listening to The Peach Pit. I'm here talking with the members of the trio from Vancouver called The Gins. Their new album, It's a Life, comes out on June 30th. Ben, Hudson, Jamie, thank you so much, guys, for all being here to talk to me, and welcome to The Pit. Thanks, Thanks for having, for having us. Yeah. Thanks. So I kind of want to go around the circle and just have like a small superhero origin story from all you guys. So like how you got started on the instrument, how you got into music and all that sort of stuff. And you go first. Me? Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, well, I, I, I was uh, just working at a, this chemical factory and I, I fell into a vat of green oozing liquid. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, I, I don't know. Um, yeah, I, I play guitar. Um, obviously, you know, guitarist of the band, um, singer, um, you know, kind of. You got to tell him what you did with your brother's guitar. What did I do with my brother's guitar? You played it backwards and then he got mad at you. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, when I first started playing guitar, I, I was playing playing it left-handed because I do everything left-handed. And my brother thought that I was ruining his guitar by playing it left-handed. So he forced me to play it right-handed <laughs> and uh, been been playing it right-handed ever since. <laughs> uh, I guess that that's a, that's a good guitar origin story. Yeah, How, is, is, that, is that adequate? I, yeah, I think that suffices. <laughs> I guess I'll go next. Uh, I've been playing many different instruments since I was very, very young. As you can see, I have like a studio set up behind me. I just record any instrument that I need, but I started with guitar when I was five and then drums when I was about, about five too. And then just continued from there, learning each instrument as I could. And then once, uh, once these two moved into the house that I was living at, then we formed the band and, I just got a lot of like hardcore practice on the drums and just continued from there. But I found that once I was getting better with the drums, it was improving my rhythm and timing with every other instrument. So anyone who's out there looking to learn the drums, do it. Yeah. And well, I, um, yeah, I'm Hudson play the bass and, uh, I guess, yeah, I was, uh, I moved to Vancouver in like 2013 to go to like this animation program. That's where I met Ben. And uh, I was never really like a musician or anything. And um, I don't know, yeah, we just became friends. And then Ben was like, started this band with Jamie and we agreed to play a house party and we lost a bassist. And uh, can you just learn bass in a week? And I didn't, but I still played the show. And, uh, but now <laughs> I know how to play bass. <laughs> That's one thing I wanted to bring up. So as in the origins of the band, uh, you guys met at this uh, animation course, uh, Ben and Hudson. Yeah. yeah. So it, that's how you, why you guys moved to Vancouver in the first place? Yeah, that's correct. Mm -hmm. That happened. And then you guys, how did you meet Jamie? Uh, I, I met Jamie at a party and, uh, and we just uh, hung out and, the and then guy he was just, back to my house because I offered. I thought I, I stalked him back to his house because uh, you know. I started the campfire and I had the guitar and I was singing in the back alley. Yeah, no. So I yeah, we just we just hung out and then I uh, I thought I thought his uh, housemates were pretty cool, so I just asked if uh, there was a room available and uh, there was moved out moved out of my SRO and downtown east side into uh, the big blue house. And the rest is history. As one does in the big city to pay the giant rents, you got to be used to having roommates, right? Yeah, uh, exactly. So the name has something to do with pigeons. I'm not really sure. I'm not clear on this whole story. So there's something about you and pigeons or do, <laughs> do you like how you think of them? No, it's just, it's like shorthand for pigeons. That's, it was like a stupid joke that Hudson and I came up with when we were in animation school we just call the pigeons the gins when we'd see them flying around or whatever you know it's like oh there's the gins yeah we'd go get like so, costco for lunch and feed the gins french fries in the park <laughs> <laughs> yeah we just we just thought it was a funny you know funny name and the pi pigeons are just so stupid and funny like basically obsessed with them so had to name the band after them and i got the the genie gin spirit attached to me 
can we get into influences or is it too soon for that? Because I, I know that you guys are influenced by the strokes, but there's mm -hmm. going to be lots more in the bag there. So is there w any names that you would want to spitball? Blink, oh, yeah. Like, I'm I so think... mad that I missed their concert last night. Who? Blink yeah, Blink-182. I mean, the thing is, is, the new record we have coming out, it's it's got so many influences on it. And every song is so distinct. And it's, I feel like our this whole record is like an exploration of a bunch of genres in like little song and just songs and and we and the band you know it it all sounds cohesive i hope because it's just in the end it's just a three piece but yeah so some songs it's more pop punk inspired like blink 182 some definitely more strokes or white stripes some like we've got one that sounds a lot like interpol um we've got you know, we've got a song called Gin Sabbath, which is like a, it's like a nod to Black Sabbath. <laughs> but um, obviously, you know, people, people will always make the comparison Nirvana, um, which is, which is fair, you know, oh. we're three piece and I got blonde hair. And yeah, so our, our last record, it was really a lot of people were just kind of the main critique was that we maybe sounded too much like Nirvana, but I honestly don't i don't even really think so but i think that this record was a bit of a reaction to try and show that they that like to try and showcase some other um influences that we have and if you're trying to get away from the comparison to nirvana then maybe having worked with adam casper this time around is not going to help you with that but it sure it was probably an amazing experience what was it oh, like it's... working with him because he's worked with so many incredible bands we didn't Jamie. actually ever get to meet him no we didn't it was all just like, it was all over email i was gonna mix for you i was like cool and then we got files mm. back and we we're like oh shit he changed a bunch of the songs I was like, yeah. oh, you're better now. <laughs> Fuck. No, he, he, he was the, okay, Dave Genn was the producer and Adam Casper was the mixer. But really what Adam was doing was he was kind of like, he was, he was like doing his own production on the songs. So he would add some cool effects here and there. And, you know, it was, we, we would message back and, and tell him what we liked and what we didn't like. And, and he, he put a, you know, it, he wasn't just a mixer. That's for sure. Like he was, he a creative helped. liberties. Yeah, yeah. He he would. It was pretty creative. A couple of things that he did, and overall, I'm pretty pretty stoked on how how Adam's mixes came back. And with the songwriting, I mean, obviously having a mixed, it kind of changes the song, but just as the core songwriting of the three of you together, do you think that's changed a lot over the years or is it really similar to how you always did it? Like what's, what's that process even like for you guys? It's, it's been pretty consistent. I mean, like usually to find the music, we'll just go into the jam space and just jam until we get something that kind of repeats that we all like. And then Ben and Hudson will come up with lyrics or we'll be in the studio with Dave and help us with a little uh, bit. Of I'd say lyrics are 99% Ben. I, uh... Yeah. <laughs> well, Hudson, Hudson wrote a couple. For Effigy, Hudson wrote all the yeah. lyrics. But it's yeah, song opera record. General, general format to like finding it is we jam it out first. So... Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, if, if you can't most... vibe with it live, then people, why would anyone want to listen to it online? Yeah. And you guys are really a live band, wouldn't you consider yourselves? Yeah. yeah. Oh, for sure. That's definitely like the... And when we play shows, we don't, use, we don't use in-ear monitors. We, we're stage monitors and no click tracks. So if we mess up, then we mess up. <laughs> yeah. That's the, that's the thrill of the show, though. But uh -huh. usually when we mess up, we turn it into a smash a guitar or push the no. drum type situation <laughs> make lemonade yeah just <laughs> set up a lemonade stand on stage that's how we're paying rent happy accidents so how happy are you guys to be playing shows again yes <laughs> <laughs> yes happy yes <laughs> um it sucks because it feels like we haven't even played like we should be playing more you know like we 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 tried we we try our best to to book as much as we can but you could always book more you know and hopefully in the near future we'll be able to like do some do some real touring again um it's uh 
it's just been a process trying to find the right people to work with. That's all because we've we've hucked it over the U.S. and Canada so many times on our own. I think at this point we are we hoping to hoping to have agencies uh, help us out. But um, like I said, it's it's a process to find the right people to work with. So we're we're right now we're 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 looking at our options for for touring some more. What outside of the music and outside of the band? What other hobbies do you guys have? music is kind of my whole life like i like downstairs here this is my studio i just live and breathe it <laughs> i mean i've started doing a little bit more woodwork you can see these little baffles underneath here i built those so i mean say it saves money yeah. money to when you can when you can fix stuff yourself and build it yourself but uh, yeah and um Hudson, Hudson and i we, we do a lot of drawing we're, we're illustrators. Um, we, we drew the album art for this record, and we also drew the album art for uh, Death Wish, and it's both of them are kind of like a Where's Waldo type, you know, massive, uh, you know, super detailed. It's kind of kind of insane um, drawing where you just add to something for 60 hours until it looks complete enough. But, yeah, we... we like back in the day, like we pretty much bonded over just drawing comics and stuff uh, and uh, goofing around, you know, because that was that was a big part of our program was illustrating stuff. So, I mean, you and I used to just play Minecraft and eat edibles. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we did. <laughs> I mean, every, I think everyone's got a phase phase in their lives, you know, you just. Kind of zone have to zone out and uh crush some minecraft for two <laughs> <weeks> straight <laughs> for two days straight yeah <laughs> is there any advice that you guys would give to ad aspiring musicians out there just keep practicing even when yeah it's i would say you got to make you, for a lot of kids that i mean that sounds you know okay so for a lot of young young people messaging me their, their demos and stuff like it's great um you know like you it's great to come up with demos and songs and stuff but you kind of have to like focus on like a couple tracks and make just like if, if you want people to pay attention to your spotify and stuff i'd say focus more on individual tracks and, and try to come up with the best song you can you can make and because really all it takes is one song to break you you know you don't need 20 30 songs in, in a massive record and all of them end up sounding mediocre because you're spreading your time so thin across a across a project i'd say and then once you have that song you you just you and and you're and you're confident with it then just can just keep promoting it you know and it i think that's what worked for me i guess um when we came up with the ep at first and I knew that I knew the EP was killer and it's only five songs long and it, it took a while, but it just enough enough talking about it on social media and stuff. Eventually it, you know, caught people's attention and uh, yeah. So just, just keep trying and keep promoting your stuff on uh, social media and, you know, you could always be doing something for your band, you know? So just always, you know, try, try working towards uh, your goal, you know? And with you saying that, it just kind of reminds me of when uh, I was reading an interview you guys did when Death Wish came out and you were talking about oh, yeah. how you had just so many songs, like you just have <laughs> a ridiculous amount of songs in the back catalog. Is that still the case? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it is. And like, like I said, like we, you have to be selective, right, about, about the music that, you, that you're producing. And we put, you know, we have so many demos that are just probably never going to come out unless we're as famous as like you know acdc one day or something come out with a four four record like back catalog release but yeah we we do have a we do go through a lot of material that we just end up scrapping you know and is there anything else that you guys would like to say to our listeners um yeah big salute from me <laughs> <laughs> salute salute all right thanks so much Derek. Salute. thanks for having me Thanks for coming to the show. And remember, everyone, It's a Life is out on June 30th. All right. Take care. All right. Bye. All right.